Okay, welcome back. Okay, so for this we're going to do a little differently. We're not going to actually follow, re perform retopology that way. We're going to start a little different. We're going to go voxel sculpting and we're going to click on just a plain document. And this seems to work a little better than what they suggest for voxels or for the retopology. So I'm going to go up in here and import for autopo. I'm just going to hit open and I'm just going to cancel out of autopo. And this imports a nice clean mesh and I'll go right here. It's a surface and we're going to just double click this really quick, type barrel, and now I'll go over the retopo room. And for retopo objects, we're going to say barrel up the top right here. And this should work out better than the way that they usually suggest. Uh, so let's go into symmetry up here at the top. I have mine set to shift S. That's a shortcut. We're going to do an X symmetry and not a Y, but a Z. And yeah, there we go. And now that we have that, let's look at it really quick. Okay, looks good. Now that we have that, I'm going to go to split rings and we're going to start adding split rings. So basically, this is just kind of adding uh, your first uh, sort of shapes, kind of what your low poly shape will be. You don't see that first one. It's there, though. You're going to go to click on quads here. And once you click on quads, I get this where it shows up the lines. And we're going to create the next line, kind of try to make the same shape as that previous one. And it'll automatically get ready for the next line and the next and the next. And you notice this isn't looking that great. It's kind of, I didn't do the best job, but that's okay. Cause we can go over here, hit escape. If you want to jump out of that, go to the move tool, which I have set to T and now go to the, do these are, you can't edit those cause those are the symmetries, but go to these. And now we can start moving these around and getting this kind of the spacing a lot better, line things up a little bit. We can spacing pretty terrible up top here probably would just follow these lines almost here that the yeah see that line there it's following kind of that board that'd be ideal and now the spacing and lining is looking a little bit better a lot better this one needs to go over a little bit over and I'm just kind of eyeballing it it's okay if it's a little bit off this isn't a precise thing this is just a barrel wooden barrel now we have that, we're gonna hit Q to go to quads. I have that set as my shortcut. And you can hit end if you wanna create a shortcut while you're hovering over an object. Uh, just to show you really quick, go over here and hit end. Let's be like, what combination key do you want? Q, there we go. And then just click on the area here. And with these, with the quads, when you click it on, I wanna show you something really quick. When you click it here, and if you go here, and then snap it kind of jumps to the next one it's a little harder to do it that way for me i always like to click this one first and then close it but see how that changed it jumped down to this it's because it's guessing what your next next direction will be so if i click this it's gonna be like oh okay and it'll, sometimes it'll jump to the left or the right you can just move your cursor over or if you want to snap out of it just really quick hit escape and jump back in I like to do this area first and then the next area because it just snaps a little bit better. It's a little easier to manage it. Now we have this. We're just going to look at this line again, make sure it's pretty clean. That's looking pretty good. And then this baseline, we want to check that too. And check the spacing on some of these. Sometimes things will snap in like that. You just want to kind of move around the object so it adheres to the proper piece of the, the mesh. Okay. Now that we have that base in there, see how we have these the rings and everything? We're actually going to add geometry easily now. So we're going to go split rings and snap, snap. And then we can just snap this. I'm just clicking these and they're just automatically going into place. so easy like I just I don't have to do hardly anything and it just snaps it 
Okay, there it messed up a little bit. Let's try seeing what caused that. So we'll snap there and there. Hmm. Not sure why that one didn't work out as well. We'll figure that out as we go along. Hmm. Something strange. Maybe because I didn't have the base information in there yet. Yeah, it's kind of snapping in there. It's strange that that one worked, but this one didn't. Let's undo a few more. Jump back to here. That was working. That one's a little odd. Why did that? Huh. Sometimes this takes a little bit of finessing. That one worked. That one did not. <laughs> well, anyways, this will happen sometimes. That one's snapping out. So sometimes it won't adhere to the surface quite correctly. Oh, there. That seems to help it if I kind of change the camera angle. Hmm. Some reason it is not adhering as well to some of these areas. This one worked. Let's try moving these a little bit just with that. Yeah, it's only following the barrel. Let's try let's try undoing this a few times. I'm just having kind of these basic barrel shape here. Let's undo a few more. Let's get a basic barrel area. So that's the barrel. Let's try making a new layer and seeing if we can do like a add split and turn this off and then just follow only the the barrel ring. Yeah, see that's adhering nicely to that. So let's do it that way. So this can just be a separate mesh overlay. Jump in here. Snap that one. It is proving to be a little more difficult than I had hoped. <laughs> or a little more in-depth, I suppose. It's usually how it goes. We're just going along, adding all these symmetry points. Well, not symmetry points, I'm sorry, quads. And we're going to go add split again. I'm going to make my brush a little smaller so it doesn't snap to those. And just follow this. If we want, we can turn the barrel back on to see how it's following with that. And maybe we'll just have these bake out separately or something. Turn the barrel back off. Go with the quad tool again. And just kind of follow the shape. And that snapped. Sometimes you gotta make sure these these actually meet. Once in a while they don't. Once in a while they do. Okay. Pull that right up to the edge. Line up a few of these bits. And go down and start this one. And this is where the symmetry would have been nice, but I mean, we have a good chunk of symmetry going on, doing a lot of work for us already, so it's okay. Now we're gonna finish the hole. So I'm just kind of going over if it doesn't quite latch. For the, for the quad snap. 
Okay, go back to add split. Hit escape to snap out of that because I didn't want it to be part of that resolution or geometry. Kind of trying to keep it the same general shape so the low poly will have the same uh, visual appearance. And also, probably want to save this barrel, I'm going to call it barrel retopo. Just as a backup file in case something goes wrong. It looks like we have one, two, so this, I wanted to add a little extra here. Let's move this one over a bit. So we have the one above it more geometry. Okay, and then hit escape, snap out of that area. And there we go. Escape. It's nice because you can just jump around as much as you need to. And here's a good point where like if I click there, it might sometimes I'll accidentally do a try and I want a quad, so I always click over on the exit or the further side and then snap the last point. Let's see how it has a just seems to work a little bit better. Okay, that's done. And it seems to jump to the next point properly too. In this case, sometimes you'll have a little hard, like it'll snap there and I'll just like pull it out, pull it around, and there. Oh, there we go. This is a lot of just uh, kind of slow and tedious work, so there we go. Got that done. We're going to jump back to the barrel. We're actually going to name this rings first. I'm going to turn the barrel back on and look at that. See how that's it's looking pretty good. I might add one more split ring here and there. And now we're going to go up to the top here and bring around this edge, this lip. I really like this process is so easy to just jump around and work on different aspects and stuff. We're going to move that out just a little bit in. And we're going to turn symmetry and we're going to say uncheck that so we can see what's going on a little bit better because we can't quite see everything. But you can see the which ones are being symmetry or made as symmetry and which ones are being made by me. So that's that's helpful. And you'll see here you can see my two points. Close that off. Now we're gonna go down to the bottom here. Do the same thing. Outside point and inside point. Kind of look around it, make sure it's snapping like this one's a little bit off so I'm gonna slide that up this needs to go out a little bit follow the form just slightly better and this is pretty common to have to you know make slight adjustments and things Sometimes you have to go to a different view to get that adjustment to line up a little bit better too. It's all dependent. Helps the program a little bit. But then sometimes you'll end up with situations like this where it's like fighting with itself to get to the proper spot. So just make sure to look at it from all angles, make sure you got it properly placed. It can be a little finicky sometimes. But it's doing an awful lot of work for us. There we go. Now that shape's nice. We're going to hit Q again. Hit escape to make sure we're on the right one. And re-adhere to it. There we go. That one didn't quite snap. We're going to zoom in. And then snap. Oh, let's undo it. It's being weird. 
and huh. That's strange. Oh, I see what's going on. There we go. And snap. It was because these points they're snapping, but they're further away than you think they are, so it wasn't quite snapping to it. We're gonna leave the top and bottom open for now. And yeah, so we're gonna look go back to our rings really quick. And I do want to add a few more split rings to this just to get some nice edges of the geometry here. I'm not really too worried about having this be very low poly or anything. I just want it to kind of hold together nicely. And we go to the barrel. I turn that on. We're going to do the same thing. I want a lot of information up in these corners. A lot of geometry. Same down here. And you noticed I got my I got it all like kind of lined up and everything before I started adding all this extra geometry. And maybe just another ring there. Oh, I'll do that one. Okay, now that that's all set up. So now we want the symmetry to be applied to the object. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit symmetry once and then we're going to go back open up symmetry you know it's a hit on the side here it's a different symmetry uncheck this it disappears for a second and then hit it one more time and then boom there's our whole object do you notice i kept the, the end caps for the last that's because this is you just hit cap and you just find the center and close and then go down to the bottom find the center and close now that's done so that's the reason i saved that for the end just because I can easily add that after I do symmetry. And you can move that point around like that. Yeah, there we go. I do see a little bit of an error right here. So we're going to try pulling that over a little. See if that looks a little bit better. Yeah. It's starting to fit better. And one thing to notice in um, 3D code, if you hit F, you can choose your point of pivot. So I want to pivot from the top, now it's pivoting there. Over here, hit F, pivot from the bottom. So that's helpful. And there is a UV room, but we're just gonna do the UVs in the retopo area. So to start with, we're gonna UV the barrel. So I'm gonna go in here, go to edge loops. I'm gonna start cutting this at kind of the sharper seams. So on edge loops, I can just click there, and it follows a whole edge loop. Go down to the bottom, click on the bottom. And now this is nice because I can actually, I could, let's see. Now I just want to do an additional split of this edge loop. And since I did these edge loops first, it just stops right at that point. And I'm going to split over on the other side as well. Boom. And now that that's split like that, I might. I might consider doing like a little bit of a split like this inside here just to give this a little bit more breathing room. You can see on the right our object's starting to kind of peel open a little bit. Doesn't have to be a seam all the way down, but maybe just a little bit of a seam just to add a little. So lose a little of that stretching. Same on the bottom. And here's where I'm hitting F to kind of focus in on this area so it pivots from that point. And then over here, same thing. Just clicking these points. Okay, there, that's done. Now let's go to our rings. Turn those on. I'm going to turn the barrel off just so we can see the rings a little easier. And with the rings, we actually have what was a split somewhere that I had modeled in. Let me turn those off for a second. Hopefully my challenge, and it's kind of off, so I'll we'll just add it randomly then. Edge loops, I'm gonna clip it there. Oops, there, there, and there. And maybe do it on the other side as well. Oops, I <laughs> did it really close to it. There, right around the middle, that should be good. a little closer to the 
about, yeah. Maybe this one would be a little bit further over here. And if you want to remove an edge loop, just hold control and click it. Okay. And then let's hit unwrap. And there's our UVs. For the most part, it's pretty much pretty much good to go. We can do a bit uh, pack UV. We'll pack them a little bit better. And if we zoom in, we can see everything's looking pretty good. A little bit. This needs to be relaxed a little bit. So I'm going to hit relax a few times. I might just do that for everything. Everything's kind of a. I'm holding shift and just clicking everything. Just going across it. And then we're going to go in here and hit relax a few times. I should relax everything. And now let's just click on like one or two. You can see now there's. They're looking a lot cleaner. All that information doesn't look like there's any overlapping. There's no like really red areas or blue areas. Everything's getting pretty good equal treatment. So we're going to save that. And now we're going to export retopple object. And this one's going to be Sparrow LP for low poly. And there we go. So now we're done with 3D Coat for now, and I will see you next in next episode in Substance Painter. Thanks for stopping by. If you like this, give it a like. If you really liked it, subscribe. Leave a comment if there's anything that's missing. This is more of an overview and not like a in -depth, super in-depth tutorial, but I'm trying to kind of give you advice and suggestions as I go. So I'll, I'll see you in the next episode. Take care.